Okay, uh, today we're going to continue with the SQL basics. We should be able to finish uh, this chapter here, number two. And where is it? Uh, here, this one. Before we get into the lecture, I would like to briefly mention um, lab eight. Okay, so in here, I posted yesterday only 10 questions. So after today, is should today. So these are very simple, basically one command line. Uh, to do the filtering, to do some aggregation. Uh, we also go through some of those today. The reason I want to mention because the submission will be a bit, a bit different. So you need to submit a link to your Google Collab and also HTML. In the past, you submit the screenshots, but now we have too many questions and it's a, I want to see the output. So uh, it's probably too much work on your end. So I'm asking you to generate HTML and I'm going to show you how to do that here. Uh, so make sure that you pay attention, submit the one so that you can see the result. Otherwise, I have to run your source code. It's going to take me some time. So I'm going to go to here, for example, uh, lecture eight, uh, lab eight. Okay. So I'm going to open this one. And then from here, you can just run whatever source code you like. I'm going to run here. So basically, you can continue to do a lab assignment. But after you finish, uh, restart and run from the beginning to the end. Make sure everything works fine. And try not to... So if you're doing your lab assignment, you need to make sure things are reproducible. So if it runs okay on a computer, it should also run fine on Google Collab uh, because you need to submit the Collab in. If it runs from the beginning to the end, something goes wrong, then you need to fix it because I won't be able to do that. So be careful about accessing files on your local computer. You should avoid it. It should directly read the file from HTTP URL. And then so in that way, you don't have to deal with the file uh, on computer. So I'm going to run this one, for example, oops. Uh, and then you can start doing coding. For example, I can do um, here SQL. So most of the time you just do this, do, uh, write SQL, uh, double percentage sign, and then can start writing stuff. So uh, here I can say uh, select, select from just like we did last time, that DB. Okay, extensions. Okay. And usually you should just put the semicolon and then run it. Oops. What's this? Oh, I, I need to connect a database. Anyway, whatever. You need to create the database first, link the database, and then you can run this one. So my point is that I'm going to show you here. You should have the output. And then all you need to do, upper right corner here, there's three dots. Okay, pay attention here. And then export. So from here, you can select HTML. Okay, I'm going to, you're going to show you where you want to download it. And so all you need pretty much is your HTML. Uh, you can, you can add your file and uh, your name if you want to. So export. And then you should be able to find this one under here. DB or wherever you save the file. Uh, let me see where is it. Sometimes it might take a couple of seconds to just still exporting. But sometimes it's slow, so it's still here. Yeah. Okay. It's done. And then where is it? Oh, it's under lab folder. So no DB. I'm sorry. So here, lab eight, right? Yes. So only just upload this one, but make sure you open it. And you see the output. So for all the code block, you should show the output. So in that way, you can just open and you can see whether it works or not. So do your assignment. Restart the kernel. Run from the start to the end. If it works fine, and then export the HTML, upload. And also you need to upload the link to a Google Collab. So in case something is wrong, I need to test it. And then so I need to call it in. So I would recommend if after you upload to a Collab, uh, also run it one more time. Make sure everything works from the beginning to the end. Then you are good to go. Are we good? Okay, so this is about the lab assignment. So next, let's go back to the, the lecture about the basics. So by now, you should be able to create a database, right? On your computer and then link it and then you can... For now, we're just using the SQL statements. Next week, we want to talk about Python. But for now, let's just continue with, uh, with this one here. DuckDB, SQL basics. So in the previous lecture, we also uh, cover how to use uh, dBeaver if you want to use the interface. Uh, but we already went through some of the basic statements, 
how to create tables and how to import data into a table. And we're going to go through this very quickly one more time so that you understand uh, what I'm talking about. So I'm going to import the libraries here. Okay. And then uh, import uh, this. Uh, so this is these are called magic command. That means you're going to treat something as other command, not as Python language. Okay. And then, so usually the first step, you need to create the database first. Otherwise, you will uh, run into the error that I showed you earlier. So create the database. Either it's a, if you uh, colon, memory colon, that means it's a temporary database. So it's not going to do uh, save data on the computer. After you restart the kernel, it will be gone. And then, so the next step, uh, usually you can do uh, install the packages first, uh, extensions first. So HTTPFS. This is the one that you need to do for the lab assignment. I provide you the sample data set somewhere there. Uh, you will need to read that directly from the uh, HTTP. So, so let's install this one. You only need to run this one once. Uh, you don't need to run multiple times. And after that, you can do this. Okay, select something from something. So for this example, this is exactly what you need to do for the lab assignment is to read that from HTTP. And Select something from something. You see here, you're passing the file pass. It, it, it's pretty intelligent. It was able to figure out it's a CSV and then read the table. But sometimes, if it's not always the case, you can have fine control. And I see in the lab assignment, I provided two data set. One data set works fine with this way. The other one doesn't. So you will have to write this one something like this. Read, okay. Uh, CSV, I think auto. And then parentheses. Oops. And within there, here you can control. You can have a more control about what you want. So if you look at this one here, right? Uh, read something, order from something, and it's, this will give you the same result. But kind of like Python, uh, reading the table, it gives you more fine control. So you can have parameters in here. I can say com uh, comma, and then you can say uh, header, for example equal to false so what this one is saying is previously you can see it automatically extract the header but if you happen that when you open the data the header are not identified automatically and it's going to show you like column zero column one that means it's not it's not good then you have to set header equal to two so i'm um, it's going to be something like this i'm going to show you here look at this see that this is not what you want you want the header to be this one. So because right now I said it specifically as false. So that's why it looks like that. So for the lab eight, I think one of the data set, you will have to do it something like this so that it can recognize. You will notice that when you print out, you will know whether it looks good or not. So this one, uh, even if you don't set that, it was okay to figure it out, but not all the data set, you can, you can do it automatically. So make sure that you, if something goes wrong, you want to have fine control, then you just do it like this. Read CSV auto, then you should be able to read the data set. So you can do the same thing, for example, for the country data set. Uh, it's also fine, so you don't need to. So just try it out. If it doesn't work, then call the function. The function allows you to have parameters. Just like pandas.readCSV, uh, most of those parameters are supported in the readCSV file. And then you can create the table. Okay, create table, the name of the table. And then after that, is, and you can treat this one as a whole. Basically, you are selecting all the data and then create the table, feed into the table. So fill the data into the table. Okay. Uh, I'm creating a table and so say success. And uh, similarly, I can create the table for the countries. So after that, you don't need to read the data from the HTTP UIL anymore because now we have these two data tables in the database. So you can just from uh, cities is the same as select star from cities. Select star basically means like select all the columns, all the rows. And this is what it shows, what it looks like, right? And this is another table. So you have the whole table. You can see how many rows, how many columns, how many rows, and how many columns. So for that eight and also the remaining of this lecture, basically teach you how to filter the data, select a subset uh, of the data out of the, the table. And like I said, Select something from something. So this one is the basically it works for all the SQL, um, all the databases. This one, as far as I know, only works uh, with StackDB. 
basically it's just like a shortcut so you don't have to select star from something but if you want it you should get the same result here right so select all the tables uh, all the rows all the columns just from the table the name of the table let's see but if you want to select a subset for example a number of columns not all the columns then you can pass in something like this so select then you need to put the name so the name needs needs need to be exactly the same as your column name right so select name country from cities limit limit that means you only sort of 10 rows or 100 rows whatever you like think about you have a, a table with a million records you don't want to show 10 million like all at once you want to show just the, the column and see what it looks like then you use the limit to limit it to just 10 rows what if you like and select from something so this should be the name of your column separated by comma so right now basically we are selecting just the name column and also the country column you see you can select just two columns out of that you can select as many as you like right i can do another one latitude uh, it should work as well so you can select multiple columns and this makes it really easy to do because you only have one table you don't need to like create a multiple copy of table everything you can just query and then you will want to create uh something temporary in the database or just pointing to the whole table <laughs> and so this is just a simple selection uh you can select by row select by column so next let's figure out for example here right how many countries right in total how many countries so basically you have the cities if you come back to here the cities has 1249 cities right around the globe and you want to figure out how many countries for example in total uh, are these cities in is it 1249 countries no it's more than my number much more than it right and so traditionally if you, if you have excel file you probably open excel and then try to run the command and then try to count or try to sort but here in sql uh statement it's only one line of call so take a look at this one here it's going to say like distinct countries so forget about this one right so if i remove this one think about here select country from cities limit 10 right so the country column is here the country column it's a three uh digit uh three character country call so if i run this right how many are you gonna get i haven't scrolled down yet so we have all oh, right because the limit 10 i'm gonna remove this one okay <laughs> So we have 1,000. I, I did show you the results. Anyway, <laughs> so basically here shows you like 1,249 countries, hundred rows of countries, but because they are not unique, some of those are duplicate. And if you just add, for example, distinct, DIS, DIN city. Okay. So what this one is doing is take that whole column and then remove the duplicate, and then it could show you, but the distinct is only, only going to show you all the numbers so it says basically here 200 rows right 200 rows that means there are 200 countries in there but right now it's just showing you the list it doesn't show you the number you have you have to read this one in in your using your eyes but there's an even better way here you can select count so if i put here let me show you here count and and then if you Put the parentheses example like this it should give you the number 200 so this is even better right so you don't need to so this whatever you are doing with the database you should try to make things run programmatically don't just say okay i look at the output and then it says 200 no that's not the point you should try to avoid that and so when you count this one you're going to show you count blah blah and then 200 so basically the output is um um data table data frame so pandas data frame and by default the name of the column is going to be like the same as your statement but if you want you can change it so you can say count something eight is going to change it to something else so you can say count right so in that way it's much more cleaner so you can add something usually you can basically change the name of the column make sense exactly this one like this in here right out and then 200 here similarly besides doing the string you can also do uh some of the summary statistics so if you look at here 
right now for example for the cities right we have a population column so it has all the population for each city so right now you can just use a simple for example uh what's the total population what's the max population for example right so if you call the max function passing the name of the column from the cities how many numbers you want to get run just one you are taking just the max population right so this one has how many 35 million right later on we can find out like which which country which city it is that has like 35 million you can use the um a having all the weird statements together to figure out but for now let's just take a look at okay so the max population is 35 million and similarly you can do sum like what's the total population right do you know how to do that in excel right you check all the column and then at the bottom you like type equal sum and then blah and then max you can do here or the same and even better if you want i think you can use this use the describe uh if i believe um not describe um summarize i think let me show you here sql um it's not on this notebook but i think it's called um summarize so summarize s u m m a r i j e summarize uh what's the name cities okay and see even better right all the columns all the numerical no just numerical columns but we scroll down i uh, scroll to the right right every standard deviation 25 percentile uh median so q50 is the uh, 50 percentile uh 50 yeah 50 right in the middle so this is basically this is the median 75 percent and also i think there's a max right where is it max here right so the same thing right small number zero 35 million and then how many unique values was the average something like that so imagine here right giving excel file asking you to do the same thing how long is it going to take you will be not like one one command line right it's going to write couple functions and this one is it's like the output can be it can be saved as a a pandas data frame and you can save it and then you can do manipulation but for now it's just showing you the output right for all the columns uh and also for example here average right so average population is actually already here so population where is the average this one right so it's, it should be the same output right 1.18 multiplied by a million something like that makes sense super easy one line of code it's uh and besides that you can also do some ordering so this is basically uh forget about it like select star from cities and then order by country so what this one is doing is going to order the name of the country alphabetically so if i run this one see the country right starting from a uh, blah 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 and if you don't limit it should show you all the results right so if here run this it's from a to g somewhere in the middle is being it's omitted here it doesn't print it out all right and if you want to order like this is by, by default it's ascending but you can also descending so if i type like d e a c it should descend from the top to the end okay so d e a c means descending what's ascending a sc okay s is ascending so ac this ascending is default okay so this is how you can rank order by car, uh, the, the the country and even better for example population right so for here because we have 1249 cities and we have 200 countries so i'm gonna ask you for example order by country and then by population so the same country the larger the, the largest population should be at the top so what we are doing here is basically has multiple criteria order by country ascending and then population descending and um, let's remove the limit so they can see the whole picture you see nicely so the same country and then the population is like descending order this is the second country population descending order right pretty nice
Hmm? Or... Oh, good point. So if you, I'm not sure you can limit him because right now you have multiple conditions. You need to look, you need to finish it first. If I do it here, I'm not sure. If, I, I I don't think it will work. So if you limit ten, I don't think you're supposed to use like that. You see, everyone misses. So you have to finish all the condition first before you select if you want one. Or you can do it like this, it should work. So I'm, I can remove this. If you take select from cities, let me see if I can limit 10 in here. Maybe not, I'm, I'm not positive. You see? So the limit needs to be at the end. So the limit is mostly just for retrieving a subset of data set. So it's not supposed to be in the middle or uh, at the end. Okay? So that's about uh, grouping. Next, let's talk about the condition. So this one is pretty easy to understand, right? Always like read from here. You understand this one, right? Select star from the cities. Then you have a condition where country equal to USA. So if you don't know, so this is kind of like you need to know the name of the column. If you don't know the name of the column, then you cannot do really anything. So for this one, if I remove it, right? You can look at the column first. Look at what column in there. And then you can start thinking about what, how you want to filter it, right? So this one, we have the country column. Make sure the name exactly the same. And then you can say, okay, country equal to USA because these are all the three character, a character, uh, country call, right? And it's going to select just the country for the USA. Understand? So how many countries, uh, how many cities in the USA? I mean, in this data table. 114, right? How would we count that? Automat uh, automatically. So how should we do that in here? Uh, oh, no, no, no. How many cities? City are not supposed to be the same name. So it should be just count. I right, just type count and then start. This will give you the number 114. Right? So pretty easy. And then you can do both, right? Select where country equal to USA or country equal to Canada. So the conditional statements, you can have and, or, or not. So right now, if I want it, right, it's going to select the countries, USA, Canada, 159, right? So you know how many in there. And, or you can certainly do it like this. Let me remove, like, I want to select all countries except USA, right? It will be like this. I'm not sure if it is. Okay, good. Right? So we just exclude USA from the country's list. We just put a not at the beginning. Simple, as simple as that, right? Just like you open ArcGIS, you open the swap file, and then you do the selection by attribute. It's the same idea, but we are doing it. This statement actually, if you use ArcGIS, when you click the, the, the select by attribute, it looks like this. Actually, it's treated as the SQL statements. But this is so much faster, and you don't have to click manually. How about this one? Select from cities where country equal to USA and population greater than how many? A million, right? We run it, get the result. How many? 40 cities with population greater than a million. And right now, you see from the beginning to the end. So I'm going to maybe ask you select these countries and then order by the population alphabet uh descending order how do we do that can we do that oh it's <laughs> <laughs> have compiler is 3d in case you know what i'm doing so i will release the uh, uh expose the the that secret key, yeah, you mm -hmm. see? Pretty good, right? So this is where you want to use Visual Studio Code. If you use Jupyter Lab, it doesn't have those uh, auto completion and then the GitHub Copilot, so pretty good. And you can do whatever you want, right? You can also order by name, you can order by whatever you like. So just one line, you get the, you get the result you want. All right, easy. Next, you can also select country uh, with this one called like. We, earlier we used country equal to something sometimes you just want to say okay i want to select all the countries start with you okay 
So tell me what, how many? Like besides you, United States, right? What else? Uganda, Ukraine, right? I guess you cannot name all of them, right? How many? One hundred thirty-nine. Okay, it's it's a lot. So you can see some loads of alcohol in here. Yeah. Hey, or uh, one thirty-nine is like cities. You can also do like countries, like distinct and then countries. You should be able to find it. And you can also do this. Also, it's just a percentage sign. So percentage sign means kind of like in uh, Windows, like a star. That means unlimited characters. So because in here USA or it can be USA U U U U or something like that. It exists. So percentage sign means unknown number of characters, right? Because U percentage. But if you want to be very precise, like three characters, then you can do it something. Uh, like this underscore so underscore means it's precise just one character before that and another character after so by doing here you and then like underscore what do you think is it going to find something when some output probably not because it's only two characters there's nothing in there but if you put another one here another underscore it should be the fine because the country codes are three characters right so underscore means exactly one character. Percentage sign means no uh, unlimited. Okay, so this one means any country ending with uh, character A is going to be selected, right? So all the A here, like that. And we talk about this one. So next, like this one, where country in? Uh, if you remember, like think about what we are doing here earlier. We use a Google ascending, right? Remember, E dot filter. Dog EQ earlier like dog EQ right this one is e dog filter dog in list but we're doing it in database so country in and then parentheses and then you have a list for example I want to select all the countries uh in Canada in the USA so this one is a, a bit more concise compared to what we used earlier country equal to USA or country equal to Canada or you can select but if you have multiple it's better to just use this one so that you don't have to use the equal all the time right so if you go back to i think wait. yeah country equal to usa and country equal to or oh, oh, you need to use all not n because there's no country name both usa and canada it's only can do one of those and um you can also do um between but this one is only used for numbers right select where population between uh a million and 10 million did you select it uh, there's quite a lot in here so between and something and something um it's used to filter numerical numbers questions so much easier than excel right and you can write very complicated uh, statements and you can just export it out. Next, let's talk about join, uh, SQL joins. A join means that you have multiple tables, or we're trying to join the two tables uh, together. And this is just so common. If it's seriously, you are doing GS, right? You have a thread file, and then you're trying to get some information from the other vector data set. Eventually, you're going to join with some data set that combine the information from multiple data sets or multiple tables. And one more time, let's look at this one here. Uh, count start cities. I'm gonna show you like in total we have one one thousand two hundred forty nine cities, and let's show the first ten cities, like right? something like in here, just to show you the name of the column. So they know later on when you try to join the table, you know the name of the column they were trying to join. Similarly, we have a country in here, right? So now take a look. Imagine here we have this table, right? The name of the city, the country code, three characters. Latitude, longitude, population. Imagine like the user case. Okay, I have this data table. Great. I have the country code, three characters. Great. But not everyone can understand the three characters. Can you? All right, UGA. What's that? Uganda. ITA. Italy. ALD. PSE. VAT. 
<laughs> this one is France, okay? France, I know. Oh, yeah, this one probably Vietnam or something like that. Oh, American city? Oh, Vatican. Oh, really? Okay. Interesting. But I have no idea. So, yeah, so that's just the point, right? So right now, what we want is a, a, a country, full name. I want to add a column, but I don't know where it is. But imagine you have another country table in here, right? This one has the country, the full name, and also it has the alpha three code. So basically the common one is this one. So how about that we join this table so that we can join the full country name into the cities so that we don't have to guess, right? Simple user case. And how many lines of code you need to run to write to join the table? One line, it's as simple as that. So let's see how it looks. All right, so look at this one. This is called inner join. Inner join, that means it's going to find a common between those two tables. And then only have the common rows. So let's look at this statement. So select star from cities. Okay, so what this one is doing, okay, I'm going to select things from this cities table. And this is where it's going to happen into the join. It's called inner join. So I'm going to have these cities inner join the country's table on. And then, so basically, this is the condition, okay? So if the city's country equal to the country's table, the alpha call, and the reason you put a three, uh, uh, um, the, the double quotes is because you have underscore, sometimes it doesn't recognize that. If you don't use that, this one you don't, it's, you, can, you, you can do that as well. You can put the double quotes around the countries. It should work the same way. But if you, you have, uh, space, you have underscore, you have some weird characters in the name of the column, then you better put double quotes, otherwise it may not work. So take a look at this one, just run it, and we see the result. All right? Fantastic. Right now we have 100, 249 rows, uh, 44, actually we're missing five cities. So let me find the city rows maybe from the country that is not a big country, so it's missed. But at least right now, we have the name of the city, all the columns, right? And then the country's column actually being joined. So now I know the name of the city. I know the name of the country. Okay. So what, uh, oh, this one is uh, Iran, Mexico, Japan, something like that, right? Pretty cool. It's just like in uh, ArcGIS, QGS, right? Join, what's that called? Join or something like, join the table. But it can be a straight bar. Later on, we can cover how to join the straight bar. But for now, I just the like, CSV. So it's nothing fancy. Again, select star from, basically you have the cities table. I want to select from the table. And then you want to have conditions. So you're going to in the join another table and then on something that means it's the primary key in the table and the foreign key in another table. Because it's here, right? Country talk city equal to this one. So if you remove it, it probably going to have some errors, I believe. Okay, so we're going to run this one. Take a look at this. Oh, perfect. Now it's like an intelligence. So probably DuckDB, it's better. But in PostgreSQL, you might run into errors. But if it works, especially if you have space, it's not going to work, I think. Don't have space. So if you have space, you're going to have trouble. If you do it like this, imagine that your table has the space. Then it's going to... Do it work? No, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so this is more consistent. So right now, basically, we join the two table. Uh, and then we have both. So this is called inner join. That means it's only going to uh, show you. For example, what we're trying to do here is to find the the city full name for all the uh, no no the country full name for all the cities, right? So some of those cities actually the country call is not found in the country table. That means the country table is not complete because it only has two hundred countries in there. Next one, select name, cities, 60 dog country. Okay, maybe right now. Oh, this one you do have to, let me see here. So basically, you need to select three columns. Okay, the city, the country, and then the bigger country. So this is basically the short code. And this is the um, full name. And I believe, yeah, you can remove the, you can remove this one, the double quotes. It should work now. Probably just because uh, DuckDB, I believe. Yeah, okay. That's better. So we can remove this one as well. So that it's more concise without something like that. Okay. 
and name countries and then big country right so here if you don't like name you can also rename it right select name country name is maybe is is maybe call okay and then this one will be maybe as country so it's easy readable right so now you can see you can extract that uh, pretty easily so the inner join that means only finds the common one but they also left zone right because earlier the city we have 1249 some of those actually are gone now but if you want to use keep all of them then you use the left zone so all you need to just replace this one from cities and then left zone countries on something something like that so this one you should have the same number 149 right so imagine here which country cannot found will be found is it like this right this five so what is do you know any of these cities oh this one is ol okay funny it's so it's sql um i have no idea i don't know what's the name because they're not found it might be just some like island or something right so these five cities are not there's no there's no like full name of the country that's why but you keep it in here rather than remove it in the zone that means it only finds the one that are common otherwise it's going to if the left zone is going for the none it's going to just put in the uh, nine values in those data tables or you can do reverse join the table to the right right zone that means it's going to uh yeah so 1291 so it's going to the um the table on the right right zone means some for example some of the countries if there's no cities it will still keep it right in the zone it means you need to have cities you need to have country you need to have common right zone means like for example if you have a country i'm not sure if there's a country without population what are those i think there's somebody in here i'm no idea right islands northern maria oh yeah makes sense right i don't know it's a country it's called a country Greenland, okay. Greenland is a yeah, it's Greenland's country, right? But there's no population. Makes sense. There's population. Oh, Greenland. Yes, I'm talking about like uh, what's the other one? Macau. What is Macau? Is the name of country? No, no population. Interesting. I don't know about this one. What Guadalupe? It is Guadalupe. Oh, you guys downloaded it from uh, uh, Natural Earth or something. I forgot. But it's like, it's like from somewhere. But it happened to be like, yeah, you can demonstrate like that some discrepancies between those two data sets. Anyway, for full zone, you can keep the balls, right? You can keep the country, you can keep the cities. And if there's no match, it's going to have more. So this one is supposed to have the largest number of records. So you're going to have some, some cities without the country name you're going to have some countries without cities so that's why you end up with ones in 2096 uh, rows lastly uh union union they select oh uh, this one is union from select country from cities union select oh okay so basically join both of them together so you might have some cities so this one end up with 247 so earlier we only have like 200 we have 247 countries there might be some duplicate in here so all you can do is like uh distinct so that you don't have duplicates in the country column oh no should i okay. no i'm not supposed to do this okay I think you might need to select okay. or you need to select at the beginning I think because that's the union is union both of them so I wish to select e at the ECT distinct and then what uh union code select from countries no, not this one. 
Okay. So basically, we have this 237, but I believe there's not enough in there. So I'm going to select. Let me write again. Select these things. Countries. From. And then I'm going to put the parentheses. And then close it at the end here. Close moves. Ah, okay. Shift to 47. Interesting. All right. So that's about uh, doing some simple uh, join. The last one is about aggregation. So aggregation uh, means you can aggregate the data group by. And let's run this one just to see what does it mean, okay? We have the cities. Uh, we have countries. And we're trying to figure out, for example, how many cities in each country and earlier right select count from country right count the name of the name so basically this one is showing you um how many countries in oh, but how many cities in each country and then group by basically you will group if the same country you're going to group all the all the cities together and lastly, we're going to do the descending order by, okay, group by is do aggregation, order by is just doing like ranking, uh, rank by count name, DST, descending. So if you look at this one here, we have 200 countries, each country has some cities in that, and then it's going to create a table, doing something like this, right? So easy. If you need to do that in Excel, it's probably going to take you a lot more steps to, to do that. So this one is just one simple aggregation. Select group by and then do the order by. Similarly, this one is a bit more complicated, um, a little bit more lines in here. And this one is the same as the previous one, except right now the country name is the full name rather than the three, uh, three uh, character. And so again, look at this one. It's a little bit like multiple steps. So we're selecting the countries country and then count how many of those from this city table and this city table is join the countries so if you are really um not sure what to do you can do it step by step so you can do this one first okay this one oh no it doesn't work there from cities oh this i see you need to exclamation here import all oh, in all in the in the group by Okay, you do need to. Yeah, this one should work. Order by. Uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky. So what this one is doing is just knowing the table and then group by the country this full name, and then order by the count of the name, the countries. So basically, you're doing the join and then based on the final table, and then you. Uh, do the ranking of that one two three four five like five lines step by step next one uh, this one is a bit more uh, different from earlier you having the where condition so you remember select something from something where the country name equal to something but in this case what we are doing here we're going to select uh, countries that with city uh, more than 40 cities in this table and if you want to count how many you need to use this bound code this function so when you call the function then you cannot use the where keyword because it doesn't support it so where can only use the column name you cannot use the calculation because we're doing by counting here so this one is do the same thing select and then group by and then having the count greater than 10 and then do the descending so in here Basically, only selecting a subset of the cities that a subset of countries that with more than 40 cities, right? So it's basically selecting a subset from this table. Look at this one here group by country, blah, blah, blah. And basically, doing the where group by where, uh, having, no, no, not where, having the count greater than 40, and then you select that, right? So this line basically added between here. 
in here. If you're only selecting, for example, the name of the column equal to something, then you can use where. If you're doing the calculation aggregation and you select based on aggregation result, then you cannot use the where. Okay, you need to use the having. It's the same meaning, but it's just like the keywords are used in different scenarios. And lastly, this is about the continuous statement uh, case and a something. So let's show you in here. So if sometimes you need to add a new column and then you want to have some criteria, this is just like in Python. It's if else, if else. Uh, what this one is doing here, if the population is greater than 10 million, it's a mega city. If the population is greater than a million, then it's a large city. Else is a small city. So case and is kind of a call block. Uh, and then when is a one condition. If, if, <coughs> else. And lastly, the end here is something that means you're creating a new column. So what you're doing is, okay, deal with this population column. If it's greater than something, I create a new column, so category, and then assign mega city, last city, small city. So take a look at this. So fast. If you're using Excel, it will take you some time to write some conditional statements to that. And this is so much easier. So uh, again, just for example, you should be able to do that. Lastly, um, how do you save the result? So as I mentioned in the previous lecture, right? You create the table and then the name of the table, and we can put in whatever you want from the output, right? So select something from cities, and then create a table. So you can basically read the do the one from the right first, right? See what's the outcome. So this one is selecting all the tables and then create table cities too. So this one basically just create a duplicate of the table with the name city two, nothing else. Okay, and now I can. From city two, right? The table is already there. So one thousand two hundred forty-nine, the same stuff. If you need to delete a table, you can use the drop drop table if exists. So what this one is doing is like, if there's a table already in there called cities USA, I'm gonna delete it because if the table already exists, you cannot create a new table with the same name. Look at this second line in here. Uh, let me come out the first line just to show you what what do I mean. So create table. Cities USA is and then select something from cities where country don't USA, right? So now you know, like earlier we select all the country belong to USA and then we create the USA table. And what happened? Yeah, it already exists because earlier it might be already created. So now I need to run this one. So in that way, you will we delete the table first and then create a new one so that you can uh, reuse name. So now we have all the cities, right, in USA. Insert into means <clears throat> um, you have the table, you want to insert one row into the table. So look at this one here. Select something from cities where country equal to Canada and then insert into the cities of USA. So earlier we will create the USA table and now you want to add more cities or something like that. So you can select, for example, you want to add all the Can Canadian countries into the um, USA cities. You can do that as well. It's not supposed to be. Uh, Canada does not belong to US. Right. But I'm saying that you can add rows into existing table. Last one, comments, right? Jack asked the question last time, right? About the comment. So single line. So basically in Visual Studio Code, simple. Just control slash. Oh no. Is it control slash? No, it's not, not control slash. So here, if this is the command line, uh, SQL statements, and if it's a single line, it's just like haystack at the beginning. Uh, two, two, two hyphen at the beginning. You comma out, or it can be at the end. You can say here, that's okay. This is a comma. Okay, cool. So you're gonna skip. It's not no control line. So anything after this two uh, hyphen is going to be a statement. You can also put it at the beginning. If you put it at the beginning, then it's nothing is going to be printed out i believe okay it's going to be just empty nothing happened if this multiple line it's going to be forward slash star uh for uh star uh forward slash okay so it'll be something like this so now basically we you you have you can write multiple lines of comments in between uh if you want to great timing we finished off then right at the 10 Right, so 
this is a pretty simple basic statement there are a whole lot more so you can again check out if you want we might cover a little bit more in the future but you can check out the uh the uh tutorial here and also DuckDB introduction there are tons of examples so for now it should be pretty easy just go there copy and paste and then you can uh, uh try to like explore some of those command lines and then work on lab 8 uh, you should have some of those questions to help you practice um and how to write those statements okay so that's all for today i will see you next week